Scott Curry back here now with Chad Jennings. And Chad, as you look ahead to 2016, what should the Yankees reasonably expect from Aaron Judge? Well, we just saw it. Dave Winfield, Giancarlo Stanton. It's good we're keeping it. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not overblowing it at all. But I, look, the, the expectation, I think with prospects, you always talk high end. You, I mean, that's, you can't help it. You, when you talk about these guys and you see a guy who's as big as he is, who hits, who has as much power as he does, you, you kind of you want to dream on him. I mean, even Brian Cashman talks about that. You like to dream on a prospect. So when, with him, you, you dream about Giancarlo Stan. You dream about Dave Winfield. Realistically, that's a lot. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's beyond a best-case scenario. You know, I mean, that's, that's asking a guy to perform at a Hall of Fame level if you're talking about Winfield. I mean, so it's – what can they expect? I think right now they can expect AAA to start because his numbers in AAA in the second half of last season were not that good. So I, I think he does need to go – there's still something to work on. But this guy's still shown a really advanced approach. He's, he's willing to take walks. He can hit for average. And the power's there. I mean, the, the best case scenario, this guy is an everyday right fielder. It's just a matter of now he kind of has to finish off his development. And then we find out just how high the ceiling is. I'm glad you mentioned AAA because, as you said, people love to dream. And I know the fans, as soon as Beltran has a slump, get Aaron Judge right. here. But I've actually made the argument that – Judge having 500 at-bats at AAA next season, and as you said, learning how to hit AAA pitching and conquering that level, that's not a bad thing, and that may be the most realistic thing. Right. I think that that's exactly right. I think that the best-case scenario for the Yankees really is that they don't have to force the issue with Aaron Judge. I mean, they, they're tied to Carlos Beltran for one more year no matter what. The best-case scenario is that Beltran hits. And, and does enough to keep that spot in the order. Obviously, you'd like to mix him in at some DH time and all that. But if, if Judge is up in the big leagues this year, it's going to be because something went wrong, ultimately. I mean, he, he may hit his way into the discussion and hit his way to where you think, well, we need to find a spot for at-bats. But those at-bats have to come from somewhere. And that's going to require someone else going down. And so, yeah, your best-case scenario is actually the judge gets quite a bit of time in AAA. All right, let's talk about something that went right, the Yankees acquiring Starlin Castro. He's their new second baseman. How about the trickle-down effect? Robert Ref Snyder was a guy who was supposed mm -hmm. to be in the mix there. Now, what do you see for Ref Snyder? Well, I mean, I think Ref Snyder is going to go back to AAA. And, and, again, I don't know that that's the worst thing in the world. You're, we talked about for years – that the, la that the Yankees didn't have a good backup first baseman in place for those years when Teixeira kept getting hurt. It's hard to find that. You, you, don't, you don't go sign a real high-impact backup first baseman, second baseman, left fielder, right fielder, whatever it is. Right now what the Yankees have done is they've given themselves enough talent that they can put Greg Bird in AAA, they can put Aaron Judge in AAA, Robert F. Snyder in AAA, Slade Heathcott in AAA, and that, there's your depth. You know, it, it used to be, we saw it last year when Jacoby Ellsbury got hurt. It used to be every time a player got hurt for the Yankees, they had to go find someone to fill that hole. Now they're not doing that. Jacoby Ellsbury gets hurt last year. It's Heathcott, it's Mason Williams, it's Ramon Flores. I think the same thing happens this year. Now the fact Starlin Castro can maybe move over to short and all this gives them some flexibility where someone gets hurt in the infield. That then it's then it's Ref Snyder's job. I'm glad you brought up Greg Bird. I, I've made the argument here about 50 times, and I know it's going to be a losing argument. Find a way to get this guy on the roster in 2016. But the Yankee brass continues to say he's our Triple A first baseman. But you believe that Greg Bird gets Major League time in 2016? Yeah, I don't think they have to force that. I mean, you talk about find a way to get Greg Bird on the on the roster. This guy's backing up Mark Teixeira, who was healthy except for a fluke injury last year, but otherwise has had some injury issues. Alex Rodriguez, who we're all well aware of both the age and the, the hip issues and everything else. This guy backing up Alex Rodriguez and Mark Teixeira, you don't think he's going to get 250 at-bats next year, 300 at-bats? I mean, I, I think it would, be, it would be foolish for the Yankees to not have a player who's an impact-type hitter waiting in the wings to back up one of those guys. You can't take the chance on, on those guys playing all year. So I, I think Bird's going to get his at-bats. They're just going to come more naturally. I agree with you, and I'm taking the over on that. I'm taking over 300. Now let's switch to the idea of the Rule 5 draft yeah. and how there's only so many players a team can protect on its 40-man roster. Well, 40. So the Yankees, in having some talent, they became susceptible to losing players, and they did this uh, winter meetings. Yeah, they did. They, they lost Jake Cave and uh, Evan Rutsky. So you'll see it here. That's a, I had to figure out how to pronounce that name today. But so they, they lost those two guys. The Rule 5 draft is all about giving a player an opportunity, a player who may be stuck and overshadowed in one organization. He gets a chance somewhere else. So the fact the Yankees are losing players here is a good sign for their system. I mean, that Jake Cave 
in almost any other situation would have been protected on the 40-man roster. But the Yankees don't have room for that. They already have two everyday left-handed outfielders. They have Heathcott, they have Mason Williams, they have Ben Gamble. They don't have space for him, so now he's going to get an opportunity with the Reds. Rutsky, same deal. They have so many lefties right now. Jacob Lindgren, Chase, Chase and Shreve, James Pezos, Tyler Webb, that they could afford to take a chance on this guy. And again, he's going to get now, he's going to get a chance with the Braves. And for those who don't know the particulars of the Rule 5 draft, this is worth the risk for some of those teams because all they have to oh, yeah. do is pay $50,000 and then they might offer the player back for $25,000. So it's basically a $25,000 risk for a team like the Reds or the Braves. Yeah, it's low risk for the team that takes them and it's, and it's a great opportunity for the player. I mean, Jake Cave, just to use the example, is going to. Now he got taken in the Rule 5 by the Reds. So he gets to go to spring training with them to get a real look to make their major league roster. And if he doesn't make their big league roster, well, then the Reds have to give him back to the Yankees, or at least have to offer him back to the Yankees. But it's just an opportunity. I mean, that, which is what you, you hear players talk about that all the time. What they want is an opportunity. And Cave and, and Rutsky, because they were in this system, they were pretty blocked here. And so this is a good chance for them to get a, get a look with another organization. If they can't make that big league roster, then the Yankees get a chance to get them back. But they're going to get a look because those are, those are not bad situations that they're jumping into.